That's right. You know, uh, I, I thought it was interesting that, uh, you know, Sonia's been serving for 30 years. Um, I'm 30 years old. <laughs> so Sonia started volunteering with the year I was born, which is amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, 30 is also standing out to me because we have a guest this morning. And his bio is in the back of your sermon notes, and it mentions that he has been serving God for more than 30 years. And Pastor Rick Van Wagner is going to come up in a moment. Uh, But how many of you, week after week, have been blessed by the messages and and the words that Pastor Scott has brought to us? Right? Amen. Amen. And I have as well. And one of the things that I have learned sitting under him for the last two years, I can trust Pastor Scott. You can't say that about every leader, right? Right? Some of us might know some leaders that you can't necessarily trust, but Pastor Scott has proven himself to me and to this church time and again. And so when we have a visitor come, someone that he's known for 30 years, it excites me because I'm really excited to see what uh, this, this, uh, this man has to bring, the word that he's got for us. He's been in ministry for a long time. He loves the Lord. He loves people. And I'm really excited. So if you would, put your hands together and give a warm Pine Castle welcome to Pastor Rick Van Wagner. Good morning. morning. It's nice to be back. Thank you. How you been? Blessed, good, and somebody went, (laughs) It's been a very, uh, should I use the word challenging? Difficult? Two years, hadn't it, everybody? I'm glad we're all still here by the grace of God. Right? I've seen... Friends, not here anymore. Family have passed. It's been, it's been tough. I've seen people lose houses. I've seen people lose jobs. Is it okay to talk like this plainly? Sometimes we kind of get so high up. Sometimes we don't talk about life. And we don't want to become irre- that, that irre- we're not relevant anymore because... We're not talking about life, but we made it, and here we are this morning, those of you that are here watching online, we made it by the grace of God, and I'm grateful for another day. How about you today? Come on, can somebody give Jesus a hand for that today? Come on, everybody. Thank you, God, for the gift of life. So here we are on Sunday in Orlando today. God has something for us, otherwise we wouldn't be here, right? Okay, more of you should agree on that, okay? (laughs) He has a purpose and he has a plan for our lives. And I'm grateful for that. I'm glad we're just not just going through life and bumping around and, you know, just whatever happens, happens. God has a divine purpose, a divine will, and a divine path for our lives. Do you believe that today? I, I believe he still speaks today. I believe he's alive. I believe he's looking down from heaven on us today. And he's here for us today. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always. Amen, everybody? And so today, I believe the person of the Holy Spirit is with us today. And God's here to help us today. I don't know what you need, but I want you to know God is here to help you today. Whatever you need today, whether it's healing, whether it's wisdom, whether it's financial provision, whether it's a messy relationship that you're praying God will restore, how many know God's here today? whatever our pain is, wherever our trouble is today. And I'm grateful for that. Because I, can I admit to you, there's a lot of times I don't know what to do. There's a lot of times I, I look up to heaven and go, I don't know what I'm going to do in this situation. I'm, I'm out of ideas. I'm out of explanations. I, I need your grace. I need, there's a lot of times just getting out of bed, I'm like, heaven, help me. <laughs> Come on, somebody feel that this morning? Like, heaven help me. I, I need, I, it's bad when you're the pastor on Sunday. Come on, everybody, right? <laughs> I, we all need the grace of God in whatever we do in our lives. And may we not forget that we need more of the grace of God each and every day. Because I think a lot of times we just go on autopilot. And we kind of just start doing things in our own strength and our own ability. And, man, it gets tough after a while. And may we keep surrendering and asking for his grace and his help in our lives each and every day amen everybody because he'll help us today well 
it's, it's probably been about two years or so since I've been back with you guys, and I'm really thrilled to be back here. I've had Scott preach in Claremont, and you were gracious enough to lend him to us off and on, so thank you for letting him come to Claremont to communicate with us in, at our church, but it's good to be back here with you guys today. I was praying for your church, and God, what are you saying to this great body? What are you, what are you saying to this people? And I had a vision of a big, big palm, a big hand, and a church was in that hand, and it was sitting right in that hand, and you know what he told me right out of the gate? He said, tell them their church is in the palm of my hand. No matter what happens, no matter what goes left or what goes right or what doesn't work or this or that, it doesn't matter because church you're in the palm of his hand. I don't know about you, but that's really comforting news to know. And so God established this church, and God will continue to help this church. No matter who comes, who goes, what happens, this or that, God's the one who's in charge. Amen, everybody? And so first of all, you need to know you are in the palm of God's hand. This this church this building, this people, because the people are the church, right? You're in the palm of his hand, and he's got you, if you will. He's got you today. He's got your back. He knows what's going on. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is our rear guard. He's got you today. Because that's the first thing I want to tell you, that you are in the palm of his hand today. If I could share with you, I was asking God, what, what are you saying to this people and you know what he told me he said tell them that i want to be a god of restoration i want to be a god of restoration and i want to have a discussion or a dialogue with you today what what does that look like what does that mean because it's a cool word but let's break it out a little bit and talk a little bit about it but the, today's message is called restoration and i know that if we were to sit down and have a chat A lot of you would talk about things that have been stolen or lost or no longer in your life. And and some of those things are so hard to experience that. We we saw some family, we saw some family we lost, we saw some friends we lost, we lost some things in the natural that were very important to us. But God wants to help us keep going when we endure this pain and this hardship and these difficulties difficulties that we experience in our lives you know it was pretty neat that she started with the same scripture i'm going to start with for the moment maybe god's trying to talk to us right everybody <laughs> psalms 23 3 he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness righteousness for his name's sake can i encourage you today that he restores your soul today no matter what's going on he restores your soul now i understand there's promises and there's a process right everybody man i just wish we got to the promise but how many know there's a process i like to eat chick-fil-a but how many know i still have to wait in line (laughs) even though it's jesus chicken i still have to wait everybody right in joel chapter 2 verse 25 it says this I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. I acknowledge that the locusts have eaten at times in my life and some of our lives here today. Can we just acknowledge that today and be honest? Sometimes well, there are no locusts. They didn't eat any. No, they, they devoured. Okay? But the good thing is God can restore even when a locust shows up. He says, I'll, re- he says, you sh- it says, I'll restore the years that the locusts have eaten. It's with an S, the word years. And you'll eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never again be put to shame. Is that beautiful to anybody else besides me here today? He doesn't want you to be put to shame. I believe, let me say this to you, I believe God is up to something good. I believe God is up to something good, everybody, something new. And he wants to restore to us what the enemy has stolen 
from us. That may be hard to acknowledge. Some of you, it's been, I, I was praying with a, a gentleman two nights ago. He called me. He said, this is too much. What do you mean? I, I've had too much. I can't take it anymore. He said, I'm having, I'm having thoughts of suicide. I have a wife, I have children, I don't want that to happen, but I'm, I acknowledge to you I'm having these thoughts. This isn't a church-going guy. And he said, nothing is going right. I've lost family that have died. I'm a financial wreck. I don't know what to do. And then he says, can I read you my list of my last 60 days of all my problems? Man, Job and him had something going, I'm just telling you. It was rough. And I talked with him, and I talked with him. And you know what? You know what happened after the end of about an hour and a half conversation? I, I said something to him. I said, you know what I think? He said, what? I think that you can't do this on your own anymore. He said, I can't. And I said, you know what you need? He goes, no, I want to know. I said, you need Jesus. You are in great need of Jesus Christ in your life. I said, I'm not trying to push you. I'd sure love the opportunity, if you wanted to, to pray and ask Jesus into your life. He said, I would love that. This great big guy. He prayed, he repeated a prayer with me on Friday night, and he asked Jesus Christ into his heart for the very first time. It was a beautiful moment. He wept like a baby. He just wept and wept and wept. But the, the tragedies and the difficult circumstances led him to realize, I need God. And I'm not a guy looking for any problems for any of us. But sometimes problems just point us back towards heaven. And we have to remember that because sometimes I forget. The Bible even warns when you're blessed and you're doing well, don't forget your God. And sometimes I think we forget how we got what we got. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Sometimes we forget. But this man... He gave his life to Christ with all sincerity, I believe, because he couldn't do life on his own anymore. I just was his friend for a couple of years, didn't preach at him, didn't do anything, just was a friend to him. And sometimes people like you and I just need to be friends with people who don't know Jesus. Just, just be friendly with them. Just love on them. And when the right moment comes, how many know Jesus will let you know? He'll put it on your heart. And I believe something beautiful can happen. Amen, everybody? So let's talk about what the word restore means, if we could. It means to bring back, return. Do you have anything you need to bring back or return or re repair or renovate someone or something to former a former condition, place, or position? So God wants to restore what's been lost. He, he, he wants hope restored. God's to re, God wants to replace your losses with with what you need or what you're hoping or believing God for. That, this is what the word restore means. So when I say God wants to bring restoration, this is what I'm talking about. He wants to bring these things back into your life. Now, you can take this one of two ways. You can say, woohoo, glory, I'm in. That's a good place. Or some of you can go, bless me if you can. That kind of posture is going to be difficult to receive, in all honesty. Because I'm not, I'm not reading to you my words, I'm reading to you the Word of God. And how many know we should always respect and honor the Word of God, even when our circumstances don't line up with what we're believing? Because the Bible says we walk by and not by, but you know a lot of believers do the opposite of that? They walk by sight and not by faith. That's how we trust God today, guys. How many know in the end we win? We win. 
at the end of my journey, we're going to win. We just got to keep going and be faithful to God. Amen, everybody? I love Joshua 21, verse 45. It says, not a single one of the good promises of the Lord had the Lord's hand given to the people of Israel was left, it says they're unfulfilled. Not, nothing was unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. That's a powerful word that Joshua declared. He said, everything God told us he was going to do, he did it. But here's the deal. How many know there was a fight? I don't like that part. Can we just be honest with each other? I'd rather push a button. You've seen the commercials where they have the little easy button? Come on, everybody. We need an easy button, right, everybody? I, I don't want to fight over the, I mean, they had to fight to give every inch of land they got from God. And sometimes you have to fight. Oh, I don't, I don't have to necessarily fight like they do, but how many know i got to stand on God's Word, i got to pray, i got to declare things, i got to do the right things to put in motion the will of God in my life. It doesn't just happen, you know that. You have to fight sometimes. Some of your kids aren't serving God. Don't you get in the corner and give up and quit? Are you kidding me? You've invested so much. Get back on your horse, if you will, spiritually speaking. Trust God. Believe God. Stand on His Word. And you just declare that they're going to serve the Lord. Well, what if they don't want to? You just declare to yourself whether they want to or not, they are coming in the kingdom. That's how you, you need to be vigilant, right, everybody? And say, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to quit. Do I got anybody here with me on an amen side on this? We, we, we got to stand and we got to fight. And, and so we declare, you know, God's word in the situation. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. A lot of you trained your kids the right way. Now you stand on that. Well, Pastor Rick, they, they've rebelled. And the more I pray, the more rebellion they have. That probably means it's working then. Okay, somebody's trying to discourage you. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. You keep fighting. Amen, everybody, right? You keep fighting. You keep trusting God's word. Listen, I got to keep moving here. I'm talking too much. All right, I got to keep going here. Isaiah 61, verse 3. This is what I want you to focus in on with me here. It says this. It says, and he wants to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, and the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Okay, this verse has a tons of promises that God wants to give us. And I'm going to go through them real quick with you. Number one, God wants to comfort us. Some of you today, you need restoration and it looks like comfort. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is our comforter. God wants to comfort those that are in Zion, the Bible says. That's talking about his people. All right, so that's the blank there. It's the word comfort. Let me show you number two. I like this. God wants to heal us. Could anybody do some healing inside or outside? Come on, that's a lot of us here. Me too. I, man, how I many know life is tough? I mean, people be rude to you in Target parking lot, everybody. We, I, I, I had somebody steal my parking spot yesterday. Can you believe that? I had, the, I had the blinker on, I had the right away, and this little Yahoo slud right in and acted like he didn't see me when he walked into the store. I'm like, uh-huh, that's how it's going to go, huh? I claim him for the kingdom in Jesus' name anyways. <laughs> God wants to heal us past pain. He talks about beauty for ashes. How many of some of you, you've dealt with so many difficult things from your childhood up until now, even recently, I can't tell you how much goofiness I saw the last two years. I saw people make the stupidest decisions the last two years. Can I say stupid in church? I'm so sorry. My mom wouldn't approve, but I just said it. People, when you're under pressure, you find out what's under, under, the, under the hood, right, everybody? And people were making crazy decisions, and it just just wrecked a lot of us or hurt a lot of us. God wants to come in and heal that area that's hurting today. Amen, everybody, right? He's a good God. The Lord is near, the Bible says, the brokenhearted, and he saves the crushed in spirit. Somebody say praise God for that. Amen. 
He's so good. Look at number three with me. He wants to give us, the word is, oh, I'm so thankful, joy. Not depression, not anxiety, not worry. He wants to give you joy today. Wouldn't you love to wake up tomorrow morning and have joy? Wouldn't that be a great way to live? It can be yours and mine. I, I'm telling you, that's what God's Word tells us. He wants to give us joy. In Job 5.11, it says, The lowly he sets on high, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. I like that. And I, like, I really like Psalms 30, verse 5. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. That's a promise. How, how, how many times have you said, Lord, I've been crying a whole lot, Jesus. You promised to give me joy in the morning. I haven't seen it yet, but I, I, I'm believing for it. Please, honor your word in my life. And let the joy of the Lord be my strength again. I've got the suspicion a lot of us aren't doing life with joy. Hopefully I'm wrong. But I've just got this suspicion. Why do you got a suspicion like that? Oh, I don't know. Takes one to know one. Life's hard sometimes. You're just trying to make it through the day. And, and I'm praying for joy for my life too and your life today. Because God, how many know God has truckloads of joy he can dump on us? It, it's not a shortage in heaven. I mean, there's shortages in inventory right now. But how many know there's no shortages in heaven? Come on, amen. We don't have to ration joy, thank God, right? Let me give you number four. God wants to give us hope. Some of you gave up having hope, and God wants to give it back to you again. I'm so grateful for that. You know, in Psalms 27, verse 13 and 14, listen to this. I, oh, I like this scripture. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, wait for the Lord. You know, the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire comes, it, it, it's a tree of life. It's, it's awesome when God fulfills what you're believing for, isn't it, everybody? I mean, can you remember the last prayer you prayed? getting answered can you remember that was that fun for you i can't hear anybody say anything i'm i'm hoping you're just being quiet and you've had some answered prayer lately i mean he he wants to put hope back inside of our hearts again he does not want the believer hopeless today you know why we get hopeless because we're trying to figure it out or we don't know a way out. i can't tell you how many times i didn't know how i was going to get through things and I felt hopeless just come on me. God wants to give us something different inside of us. Remember that scripture? He wants to he will put a garment of praise on us when we have that spirit of heaviness. Can, can, I, can I say something to you? The Hughes family, they are some of the most anointed people. I'm just telling you, you have a gem and, and I have the utmost respect for them. They you have carried God's anointing on you. The whole, I've known you 30, 40 years, and you have carried God's anointing on you every time I see you. I'm so grateful for that. Thank you for what you do for the kingdom. Don't take gifts from God for granted. Got quiet again. No, man, man, you should come in here just lifting up holy hands, however you worship. Just, man, don't take an environment like this for granted you know this is special i'm so glad somebody agreed with me thank you so much come on this environment is special oh i got more people joining the train now you're, you're so blessed because isn't it all about having god's presence i mean there's so many I mean, respectfully, there, you can sing the same song, but it doesn't have the same presence. And we'll just leave it at that. But 
man, you put on that garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness, gang. Put it on so you can get that hopelessness off of you. Start to, start. I mean, you were singing, standing on the promises of God or all these different wonderful songs. Man, just start, start to engage God. Pastor Rick, I'm so tired and worn out. Don't let that dictate what you do or you don't do. You do what you know is right. Listen, I read my Bible every day whether I want to or not. That's a telling statement, isn't it, everybody? There's days I'm like, man, are you kidding me? I, I'm just going to do it whether I... I've told myself, if you don't quit complaining, though, you get an extra chapter. So <laughs> the voice went away in my head. <laughs> Let me show you number five. Lastly, God wants to establish you. God wants to establish you. Wonderful things happen when he begins to establish you in your life. You begin to, you know, the, now I don't think just about myself. When I was younger, I just thought about myself. But now you start to think about, huh, I want to leave a legacy. Anybody else thinking that way? I, I want something to outlive me still here on planet Earth when my time is over. And so I, I'm, thinking leg, I'm thinking legacies now. I'm thinking building a, a legacy. Not, not for my name's sake, but for his name's sake. And when you start to think that way, you realize, I'm not just, man, I'm not just taking up space here. I'm here to make a deposit in people's lives. You see, God puts something in you so something can flow out of you. It's not just for you. Something goes in you so you can give something back to somebody else. That's what, that's what it's all about. What I can pour out on somebody else. And so that's, I, that's my prayer is that my finances would be that way. My talents would be that way. Whatever I've learned, would, it would all go for the glory of God to touch somebody else's life. I love Psalms. And I'm going to take a guess since you've been learning on Psalms this year. To being taught on the book of Psalms this year. You probably looked at this scripture, but I'm going to read it anyways. In Psalms 1, 1 to 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the path of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. Listen to verse 3. It's a great promise. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. And I like this. Whatever they do prospers. When you do the right thing, you put God first, you honor Him, how many know He comes through for us over and over again. Can we give it up for Jesus here this morning, everybody? Come on, everybody. I want to pray for you this morning. Some of you, I can just feel in my feeler, <laughs> you're really hurting. And I'm sorry, but things have been so hard. Just makes me want to weep for you. Some things aren't fair. Some things aren't right. What do you do? How do you reconcile that? I know in the end that God will make things right. I know that He knows everything. He's watching over everything. And I just have to trust Him. The Bible says in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. I have to trust that today. I don't understand it all. I don't get it. I don't even like it all. Come on, is that fair to say? But God, how many know God's good all the time and we trust him today?
Can I pray for you, please? Father, I ask your divine blessing on every single person, those online, those in this building right now. I ask for heaven's touch on you. I pray, Father, that you would heal those who are brokenhearted. You would encourage those that are hopeless, those that are depressed and anxious, that you give them peace and that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. I'm asking for you, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, to sweep across this place, sweep across that internet, and touch people right where they're at right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we can't do it in our own strength, our own ability, but with you, nothing is impossible. So today, I declare heaven's blessing over you, and I declare that this is a season of restoration, and what the enemy meant for harm, I pray that you would turn it around for good. And I thank you, nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, if you agree with me, say a hearty amen today. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus here this morning, everybody. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. We're not done yet. Every so often, we got to take our car in to get an oil change. Get things looked over. Doesn't mean the car's bad. Just means things need to get fixed up a little bit. Could I encourage you? It, listen, it, it, things may have been difficult. Just go let Jesus touch you in a new way. Pull up to heaven's drive through Let him fill you up fresh. Let him tell you what needs to be done. And let him just begin to do something on the inside of you again. Amen, everybody. God's good. He's with you, Pine Castle. He's not against you. Remember, I started it. I saw the vision of this church in the palm of his hand. He's got everything all worked out, church, for you. You're in his hand. And he's going to work something beautiful out as we trust him and we put him first in our lives today. Amen, everybody? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I think I have two. Do I have two minutes? I do? You don't say that to a preacher. I'm just telling you all. I just want to share a couple things I feel like God's telling me for people. Sir, I don't know you, but I felt like God just spoke to me this morning about you. I saw a vision of you seeking God. You're just seeking God. Trying to find God's wisdom and direction. And it was completely pitch black in this vision. And I heard the Lord calling you. And you, it was pitch black. You were taking these baby steps because you didn't know how to maneuver because there was no light. But the voice was leading you out of the darkness. And, and it was so powerful. And the Lord has not shown you everything to come right now intentionally. And he's requiring you to just listen to his voice. It's a real season of uh, trust for you. But there's a powerful anointing on you. I don't know anything about you, but there's some generational blessings that have bounced on you. Dear Lord Jesus, there's some ministry stuff back when that's on you. It's like all of it combined to the moment and just, boom, just, just exploded above you. You carry your own anointing, but some other generations past you also have an anointing that it's just like it's... Am I making sense how I just said that? I don't know anything about you, but... Well, I just, you take that. I, I just see there, there's an anointing about to explode on you, sir, and it's really going to be cool. And I just feel like put your roots down. You got some, some cool stuff to impart and have imparted to you here. You're not here by accident. God's, God's put you here in this season for something really cool. So God bless you guys. Um, I heard something for you guys. Um, I heard the Lord is extending his hand of grace towards your, fa your family. I saw him gathering up little chicks and bringing them in. And um, 
He told me the sacrifices you've made for the kingdom have not gone unnoticed and your family will be beneficiaries of things you've sown. And I saw him mending and healing and doing some beautiful things for your family. Something, something really beautiful. So you've been praying about some stuff, troubling, and I'm just telling you the Lord's working on some stuff over time. So it's really exciting stuff. God's so good, isn't he? You have a great church here. You have God's presence. Nothing's going to take that from you. You hear me? You keep seeking God. He's going to do his thing. And, and I just, I know God's got great things in your future. And just keep trusting God. You are in the palm of his hand. Amen, everybody? Thanks for letting me come from Claremont to be with you here today. I hope to see you again. God bless you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got nothing to add to that. Uh, thank you very much, Pastor Rick. Um, if the ushers want to come forward, uh, we want to honor uh, Pastor Rick for bringing God's word and having uh, time with us this morning. And so uh, if you have an envelope, uh, on the envelope you can write uh, Pastor Rick. If you need to make out a check, you make it out to Pine Castle in the memo. You can write Pastor Rick, and we're going to uh, collect those, and we're going to send him a, a check to thank him and a love offering for his time here today. Uh, and so um, go ahead and start collecting that, and then uh, in a moment we'll dismiss, but not just yet. Go for it, Carl. That's a great question. So for those of you who didn't hear or those online, uh, if you don't have money on you, you didn't, uh, you didn't plan to have a, a love offering, uh, you can give online. Our website, pinecastleumc.com forward slash giving. Uh, you just in the drop down box, there's an other category and in there you can specify uh, that it's for Pastor Rick. It's for the love offering for today. How many of you were blessed by Pastor Rick's message this morning? Amen? If you would, at this time, uh, stand for the benediction as we close out our service this morning. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I know I was blessed. I know you were blessed. And uh, what a great message. So, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the throne of his great majesty, the only Savior, our God and King, be all glory and power and majesty and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, Pine Castle. Be blessed.